The uh, chair of this week's summit is Guru Parulkar, but he is not the only guru in the room. Another one is our next speaker, David Meyer. David is at Cisco. Uh, he spent a lot of time at Cisco, but not in one continuous stretch. He also spent some time at Sprint, <clears throat> so he's got some real operational expertise. But throughout his career, he's really been a leading voice in how do we make sense of all this. He's been on the Internet <coughs> Architecture Board and in the IETF. He is currently on the President's National Security Telecoms Advisory Committee for Next Generation Network Task Force. Um, and he has perhaps a deeper understanding of what this all means and how you make it happen than, than most anybody else. Um, his perspective is longstanding and uh, broad, and it is also very deep. So I'm uh, pleased to welcome David Meyer. Thanks, Dan. See, now all I have to do is figure out how to work this. Hey, I'm standing between you guys and food and drink. So uh, uh, let's see. So um, when Dan asked me to talk about this, I, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about it because um, it, it's kind of an interesting question about what, what is the role of OpenFlow in enterprise and how does it compare to, say, for example, data center and things like that. So I spent a lot of time thinking about this. And I came up with this talk, which is sort of my ideas and thinking about this. And I think all of these ideas that I'm going to talk about, it's the end of the day here. We've, we've heard about a lot of these today, but maybe have refactored them just a little bit. So here's what I think I'll talk about here. Um, a bit about what the problem space is for enterprise, um, a few use cases, and I want to reflect a little bit on the, the promise of what OpenFlow SDN is really all about um, and through a use case, and then I'll just uh, close it up with a few challenges and what I think are open questions. So, so what's the problem here? So as far as I can tell, and, this, and I've heard this from everyone I talk to, Basically, enterprise architects and networks and, ne and network engineers are being presented with the challenge that they need to basically provide state-of-the-art network infra infrastructure and services while at the same time making it cheaper, uh, you know, minimizing the TCO. That's, that's a little bit of a tough job. And the thesis here is that it's the lack of, in it's the lack of ability to, to innovate at the network, in the network, um, and that results in, in the inability to keep pace with user requirements and to keep the TCO under control. And it turns out this is a surprisingly general problem, or maybe it's not so surprising to some of you. But what I've, what I've heard from people, or what I continually hear from people are things like, oh, well, I have a new iPhone. You know, I have an iPhone 4S. I got one, by the way. It's a pretty cool phone. Um, uh, I just walked into an Apple store and got it. Uh, uh, or, or, you know, I need to have my building be green. I need green networking in my building. You know, and, and you never built the network for that. And, and what it really means is that these people are faced with this constant, constant stream of new requirements. I think, you know, I, th I think someone just said it's just that the perimeter of this is changing it all the time. So, okay, that's, I mean, you can state that, but what's really, what's going on? What's the problem? Well, I, I like Google Images, so I, you know, I typed enterprise network in Google Images, and I got this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... You know, I looked at it and I, I thought, yeah, okay, that, that may be that. That is the problem, maybe. And, but what about it is the problem? Well, it's, it's kind of this. It's that every device on this is different. There's firewalls, load balancers, switchers, switches, routers, and every other kind of thing. So there's no common way of thinking about the boxes in this network. They're just all individual entities. Um, the second thing is, is that the people who have to build and operate this have an extremely myopic view of it. In, in other words, they take a box view of this rather than a network view. And the, and the third thing is, is that the policy that the network's trying to implement is deeply intertwined with the configuration of the network. And the network itself is the database of records. So this, this is, all of these things conspire to make this a pretty tough problem for folks in, the, in this business. So, you know, this could be the problem. See, but, you know, it continues. Because, like, at least Ethernet's still simple, right? I mean... Over time, it's, it's, you know, Ethernet's getting more and more complex, too. So even the simple things are getting complicated. <laughs> it's simple. So what we wound up with was this. You know, this is a, this is a, a sort of an example of a sort of a um, mobility scenario. But basically what, you, what the picture is showing you is you have many protocols, many touch points, few open interfaces, no, few or no 
or no abstractions. So you have this complexity that's growing. It's, and so as a result, what you see is something that you see kind of a curve for the network that looks like this. So you want the network to be robust, but it's getting more complex. So if you look at the curve, what winds up happening is you can, you can increase the robustness of the network to a certain degree by adding more complexity. But at a certain point, that complexity starts hurting you. And that's what we're seeing today. So you have this, uh, if, you, if you head to, to the long tail, what, what you notice out there is that you have more and more protocols, more and more kinds of configuration, and more and more interactions. So it's sort of this heavy-tailed curve of robustness versus complexity. So how's this all related to, um, to SDN and all of this stuff? Well, OK, so it's that there's this, something that's called a complexity robustness spiral going on. Now, I come from Eugene, Oregon, so I got to work in a Grateful Dead reference here. <laughs> um, so this picture was drawn by uh, Robert Hunter, who was the lyricist for the Grateful Dead at one point. The, the, animal in this thing is called an Ouroboros, which means a worm eating its tail or something. But here's what winds up happening, is that you, let me back up just a second. In, in an attempt to increase the robustness of the network, move up this curve, you have to add complexity to it. That's how you get it. But at a certain point, you start getting um, increased sort of um, a sensitivity to certain kinds of failures. So what you do is you add more complexity, right? So what you get is this. And I like the way Robert Hunter described it best, is that they get greater demand, so they need larger halls, more equipment, bigger, bigger organization, larger overhead, but in order to support it, they need more gigs, so now they need larger halls and things start going bad. You know? And this is what's happening in the network world right now. And there's a real nice paper by John Doyle et al. and it's cited there if you want to take a look at it, where they actually uh, describe the actual theoretical basis of why this happens. But th this is all happening to us right now, because all of the complexity of the network is exposed to us. We don't have any abstractions to stop it from happening. So what is, oh, so what do you, <coughs> excuse me, so what tools do we have and what do we get from SDN OpenFlow to like address all of this stuff? Well, we've seen all this today, but I'm just gonna try to reframe it this way. Um, we have the forwarding ab abstraction, that's OpenFlow or the flow space or however you wanna look at it. We have distributed state, abstractions, this is a, a you know, global network view, logical or virtual. And we have a distributed network control abstraction, you know, the NAS or whatever, or whatever we want to call that right now, controller. So this is the key though. With these abstractions, what do we get out of this? Well, we get a unified way of thinking about the boxes in the network. They're just forwarding planes now. That solves one of the problems in the first picture I, I'm, I showed you. Uh, we have a centralized view of the network, right? It's not a myopic box view anymore. Now it's a logical or even virtual view of the network. And then we get mechanisms from, for decoupling uh, policy from configuration. Now, OpenFlow SDN doesn't do this directly, but it makes it possible. So I want to illustrate this in a use case, but right now, um, the use cases that I have been talking to people about are these. Dynamic access control. Nick talked about this. I want to drill down on the Nick's example just a little bit after this. Um, someone else, I, I don't know, we heard so much today. Someone else mentioned that, you know, you can make the network do load balancing now. You don't need to have a separate device. You can do server load balancing. You can do interesting things like latency equalized routing. Do people know what that is? It's like you might want to slow down some packets because overall TCP throughput might be better. Um, you can do firewalls, NATs. Um, network virtualization, of course, and this, you know, slicing is, the, is what people like to call us. You can also do en energy efficient or energy proportional networking, which, um, which, which uh, addresses the whole green question. And then adaptive network monitoring. One of the problems with network monitoring that we're having is there's too much data. Well, you might be able to, you might be able to using OpenFlow, uh, tailor the kind of statistics that you're, ca you're capturing from the network. So what is the promise of all of this? How does it all come together in the enterprise case? Well, as I said in just this earlier, I really like this um, work by Nick and his, and his folks at Georgia Tech. It's called Decop. I, I really highly advise this paper. It kind of really shows you um, easily how, how you can see what the promise of all of this is. It's by Nick and his colleagues. There's the URL. And basically, the study shows how the unified network view and um, 
uh, of devices and the global network view allows this elegant decoupling of policy and configuration. And the context they did it in was this LAN, WAN or wireless, wireless LAN authorization or access control thing. So what they did was, oh, I think I have a pic, so don't read this. I just yanked that out of this paper because it, it, so the things that are bolded are saying, you know, there's a billion steps, okay? Just, just put it that way. There's a billion steps to get this done, okay? And that's an eye chart, but, you know, there's a lot of things that have to happen to make this happen. And it's all done by configuration, and the policy is implemented through this configuration, and it's very brittle, very baroque, I like this. So what these guys did was said, well, why don't we just build a state machine that talks about what this has to do? And then I think Nick showed this, but this is the picture. So what you do is you build a state machine so that the controller can track the state of the hosts. And then it can just program the network in such a way that given what state, what state the uh, host is in, it, ha it gives it the right kind of connectivity. So it's a really kind of a nice thing. And the, if you have this, once you have this, what you can do is, the next thing, you can decouple policy and configuration. So what they do is they have their policy, that state machine, um, that lives in their open flow controller, and then the open flow controller instantiates the appropriate configuration in the network. It's really an elegant approach to this. There's one other thing that the, that's in this, is that the, at, at the controller, you could build a domain-specific language, which is a language that's tailored to the environment that you're in in order to represent this. So the operators of the network could describe the policy in a, in a succinct way that's optimized kind of for their network. So what are the challenges I'm seeing? Well, one of the things that I think we all really need to think about and work on, and this is true not only in the enterprise case, but in all of the cases, is that we really need to um, think about what are the, the theoretical or scientific foundations of all this. You know, um, SDN is a new way of thinking about networking. We don't have the 30 years of history behind us that we do for the sort of internet space. Um, and this, this includes like distributed systems theory, network new kinds of network architectures, programming languages, all of that. We need to uh, stabilize and extend the OpenFlow protocol itself. I think people have talked today about how um, that's an issue because people won't want to forklift things, and, and that work is well underway in the ONF. Um, there's an issue of programming languages, models, systems, and all of this sort of thing. Um, we build applications, say, for Knox, but they're not reusable because of the nature, <coughs> excuse me, because of the nature of Knox. Um, and that's, this is part of the uh, goal of frenetic. Another, another issue is, you know, generic ways, I think Jen talked about this, generic ways to handle streams like you know, with functional reactive programming like Nettle. That's a, that's a very interesting thing. I, I, really, I really highly advise that. And then there's this issue of tool chains. If we're going to have software-defined networking and we're going to write code, we need tool chains. And what else? Hybrid model. We just talked about this a little bit. Hybrid model's a little bit thorny. Um, if, we, if folks want to talk about that, look, you know, look me up after this. Um, let's see. Scalability. One of the things that um, I wanted to ask, you know, the, I was the guy with the Northeastern shirt who didn't get to ask the question. Um, my daughter goes to Northeastern. Uh, is that there are scalability concerns. Like someone mentioned flows. Somebody was mentioning how many flow setups per second you can do and things like that. There's proactive versus reactive flow instantiation. There's transactional throughput. These are all things we have to learn. And then on top of all of this, we, we need to build the operational tools and practices that allow us to operate net, these new kind of networks. And these are kind of generic challenges, but they're, they are also acute in the enterprise. Ah, that's all I have. <laughs>